Hello and welcome to Eminent Reflection. This channel is supposed to be for deep thought stuff, so time to get down to business. We have an election going on here in the United States. Well, technically, actually, we're in a nomination process that precedes the election, but you could call that part of the election. <clears throat> it's um, a slightly deceptive way to put it, and I think in a lot of cases it's put that way on purpose to be deceptive. So I don't want to be deceptive. But I do want to tell you how we can beat this. We meaning you. Because I'm speaking to someone. Hopefully, hopefully somebody will watch this video. And I want you to know how you can beat this. Now, you might not agree with me about who should win. And that's fine with me. Because if it's going to be democracy, it's about what each of us wants. And what we want collectively is not about what I want personally but <clears throat> I want to speak a little bit about uh, getting old because I know Bernie is supported a lot by younger people younger voters younger non-voters okay a lot of younger non-voters support Bernie and continue to be non-voters meaning they're not gonna get out there and vote for him if you want to beat this don't be a non-voter and don't vote for the lesser of two evils because that's actually even worse and I know practically everybody out there will tell you otherwise but let me explain first off I'm not real old older people than me tell me I'm young uh, but I'm old compared to some people being old isn't a bad thing getting old is a good thing getting decrepit is a bad thing avoid that if you can and if you let yourself get weak, if you let yourself be walked on, yeah, you're basically becoming decrepit and you can do that long before your time. We need to work together to come to the best possible outcome. We should be spreading this information as fast as we can because those of us who are fit enough to do that and I don't mean fit in the sense of you go to a gym and you work out and you build up your muscles I mean fit as in fit for the society we live in to make a positive difference and to be an active part of this society those of us who are fit for that should be very good at getting this stuff out and talking to each other about it using the internet now, I, I want to show what the situation actually is. Let me get this piece of text out of the way here. And I want you to take a look at this uh, <clears throat> this graph from 538.com. I'll leave a link in the description to the web page this comes from. Um, the, the text at the very bottom, ignore it, because it actually goes with the graph following this, which I'll get to. But... <clears throat> this particular graph is showing the chances of Joe Biden winning the election, the, the, not the election, the nomination process, winning the whole nomination process uh, up to the pledged delegate vote as being greater than 99%. But if you actually look at the graph part on the left, you can see the, the um, magenta line representing Joe Biden started out way above everyone else but not above the 50% mark, and then drop down to next to zero, and then later on shot back up to where they have it now. Now, I'm a little suspicious of something, and this is not you know conspiracy theory, just my own personal suspicion. Uh, when the Northern Marianas caucuses were happening, they didn't freeze this simulation like they usually do. As a matter of fact, it's the only time I know of in this election process that they didn't freeze the simulation and I wondered if that might be because they expected Bernie was going to win and it was going to skew the results so Bernie would end up on the top instead and uh, they maybe didn't want that to happen and <clears throat> I've, I've seen other things that have made me suspect similar things and the reason why I bring that up is because whether there's any intentions of such things involved or not, this sort of thing can happen. That people can present information to you that makes you feel like you can't win. 
So you give up. Now, if you're supporting Joe Biden, you want Joe Biden to win, by all means, I'm saying, you know, I, I'm going to tell you, uh, try to make it happen. If you want Bernie Sanders to win, try to make that happen. I want Bernie Sanders to win because I think he's the best choice. If you disagree with me, then, you know, make your make your best efforts uh, to make sure that you're right, first off. But if you, you know, if, if you stick with that, if you do your research and you really think you're right, make your best efforts to make the candidate you think is best win. This is changeable. Joe Biden is showing on this graph as nearly 100% likely to win. But let's look at that next graph, shall we? This is the graph of how many pledged delegates each candidate is predicted to have after uh, after all states have voted. Now, of course, it's not all states at the beginning of the graph on the left-hand side. It's all states on the right-hand side, which is like in the middle of the screen. Where we're at right now is that little line, that vertical line there that says, um, well, let's see, can I, I, I can move that around, can't I? Yeah, today, um, Northern Marianas, here we are. That's the line we're actually currently at. And if you notice, that is less than a thousand delegates so far. Less than a third of the total delegates have been given out. And they're predicting that uh, it's going to continue to build up that way. Well, if you, if you looked at earlier predict predictions, if you, if you looked at this, this graph earlier on in the process, it started out like that with Biden up on the top and then it flipped and Bernie Sanders was up on the top and the line still diverged like that because it's the way the simulation works. So my point is you can change this. You can affect the outcome. There's still over two thirds of the delegates left to go. And who wins that two thirds of the delegates? Who wins most of that two thirds of the delegates makes a huge difference. Now let's have a look uh, farther down, and as as we go to the individual states, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from the graphs of each state. Which this is this is Florida. Again, the predictions have changed over time, and I'm going to switch from uh, showing that to showing this view which shows the predicted number of delegates to be won in each of those contests now notice these are not like the general election where in the general election most of the contests are winner take all these are winner take some winner take more than the other there's not a, a an absolute winner an absolute loser in here <clears throat> and why is it predicting that Joe Biden is going to get most of the votes? Well, I don't know. It depends on how the, exactly the simulation works. But I would say probably because people have a tendency to give up. And that's taken into account in the simulation. If you think your candidate can't win and you give up, you help your candidate not win. You help make that prediction come true by giving up. If you don't give up, if you refuse to give up, if you say, no, I'm going to fight like hell till the end no matter what, then you increase the chances of your candidate winning. I I've been seeing a lot online of a hashtag, Bernie or Vest. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Um, it seems to be that people are talking about rioting in the streets if Bernie doesn't get the, uh, <clears throat> the nomination. Okay, so maybe they're threatening the establishment a little. Maybe there's something else intended there. I don't know. People are desperate. I get it. Eh, there's a good chance riots will happen. I'm not going to encourage that. I don't think that's a good idea. What I will encourage is tell the DNC, tell other Democrat, Democrats if you're a Democrat, um, and, and tell Democrats if you're not a Democrat, what you plan to do with regard to the election and how you plan not to give up because bernie sanders can't make you vote for joe biden and i don't think he'd want to in 2016 i managed to find out a little something about the truth of that um that i won't include in this video but i will say this much 
I'm pretty sure, I have good reason to believe that Bernie wants your vote, not just in the primaries, but in the general election. He's kind of said as much, but he's careful about how he words it because he has a contract with the Democratic National Committee and he doesn't want to violate his contract. Bernie takes the law very seriously, including contract law. <clears throat> it is up to us, not up to him to point out what we see wrong, to do the things that we feel need to be done, to be the society that we need to be and that we want to live in. So let's just take a quick look. Um, now, I'm going to tell you first off, this may look discouraging. Don't let it discourage you. This is just a prediction. Looking at Florida, we got uh, Biden getting about two-thirds of the vote. Um Illinois, this prediction is saying uh, Biden's going to get about, uh, again, two-thirds of the vote. Wait, did, did I did I say that wrong in Florida? Let me look back at Florida. Um, no, that's more like three-quarters of the vote. Okay. Illinois, about two-thirds, of, of not of the vote, of the delegates. Um, <clears throat> I'm wording this poorly. Sorry about that. Ohio, uh, moving on. This is all in the, in the upcoming uh, nomination process process on March 17th. Uh, it's saying Biden, uh, again, about two-thirds. And Sanders, um, the other one-third. And, and here in Arizona, uh, it's showing Biden, again, um, getting about two-thirds and Sanders getting the other one-third. Now, this could go completely the other way. It's possible that Bernie Sanders could get 100% in one of these. It's possible that Biden could get 100% in one of these. What makes the difference is do people get out there and vote for who they want? Now, to those who are supporting Bernie Sanders, um, he's not a newcomer. He's been in this game for a long time, and he's been fighting for the people the whole time. I know. I've been watching. But... <clears throat> He's been working for a small state and not real well-known nationally. Biden has been well-known nationally for a long time. He's got the name recognition. And he tends to have the support of hardcore Democrat loyalists who think the DNC uh, is their lord and master. We, the people are supposed to decide elections, not a committee of some political party. And that committee does not have your best interests in mind. They have their best interests in mind. They are being funded by the same people Bernie Sanders is fighting against. That's why they don't want Bernie Sanders to win. That's why they want Joe Biden to win, because he's taking their money. Now, am I saying Joe Biden is a bad person? No, I'm not saying that. You make up your own mind. Bernie's not saying it either. Bernie's a friend of Joe Biden. Joe Biden has not been a friend of Bernie Sanders. Bernie's making a mistake in saying Joe Biden is my friend because Joe Biden is not being a friend to Bernie Sanders. He's not. He's not being a friend of the people either, and I think that's terribly more important. So, what I want you to do is to Consider the fact that this can be flipped. Go back to this this earlier chart that I was just showing you and take another look how many delegates proportion-wise are still to be allocated. We can flip this, we can win this, but we have to work together we have to fight for it and it doesn't mean telling people don't vote for joe biden that's discouraging people they want to vote for joe biden let them vote for joe biden as a matter of fact the people who actually want to vote for joe biden you're probably not going to be able to discourage them so why even try but people who want to vote for Bernie Sanders could have elected him in 2016 i did the math we made him a valid writing candidate in many states where he would not have been otherwise. I did the math. Bernie could have won. People didn't even know he was an option and he broke records all over the United States as a writing candidate. In 2020, we will do that again if he's not on the ballot. We should not have to. 
And if the DNC understands that you are not going to simply let them walk all over you, if they understand that you are planning on doing what needs to be done to get your candidate to win, if they understand that they can't simply tell you who to vote for or how to vote, then they have a very strong incentive to nominate your candidate, whoever that candidate might be. Like I said, my candidate is Bernie Sanders. In the general election, I will be voting for Bernie Sanders. I will not be voting for, for Joe Biden. And the DNC can't make me do it. I'm an independent. We independents outnumber Democrats. We outnumber Republicans. We decide every single election in this country. But what we don't decide is who we get to pick from. And that's because the political parties have stolen our democracy. Isn't it time we take it back? Please, share this. Spread it around. In, in, in the midst of a, 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 of a pandemic, I hate to say make it go viral, but consider this. We are fighting against an illness spreading around right now, and we've got the same exact situation. If we don't fight it, it will win we will lose. There are steps that have to be taken to protect ourselves, to protect each other, to stop this thing from getting worse. And that doesn't matter which one of these two I'm talking about. It's just reality. So thank you very much. I hope someone will see this and share it with others.